Eric Brown. I am the general counsel of Nutmeg Independent Labor Unions. And I have with me today, Sharon Joquim and Lori Braun, who are part of the Cheshire Secretarials Union, uh, one of the first unions that came on board with Nutmeg back in 2015. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about uh, why they came over to Nutmeg and what Nutmeg can do for them. Um, as a predominantly female bargaining unit, they have uh, some needs and interests that may be different from some of the other locals that we represent, such as police officers and public works employees. At Nutmeg, we, we aim to serve all of our members, even um, the differing interests of our various bargaining units. So I think we're gonna have a good conversation today with Lori and Sharon about Nutmeg and about what we can do for our unions. Before we begin, I'm gonna ask Lori and Sharon to introduce themselves. I'm Lori Braun. Uh, I am the assistant to the principal at the middle school. I'm Sharon Joachim, and I am the uh, secretary to the director of people services in central office. So Sharon, back in uh, 2015, Nutmeg was probably about two or three days old, and I got a phone call from you um, looking for new representation of your union. So if you can, just tell me uh, what was going on with your union at the time that led you to start looking for new representation. There were a lot of precursors to lots of seeking new representation, but the, the trigger at that point was we had an employee that was facing termination. And when I reached out to the rep we had at the time from our, our union, I was basically told that there was nothing they could do for her and that they would not be coming to help. I then had to manage that situation on my own with management. I'm happy to say that I think it worked out well for both parties. I called an executive board meeting. I divvied up some duties. We all started thinking about and reaching out for people to people for references. Uh, and your name came up to me. So I reached out to you. So uh, that was your experience before not Megan. And maybe uh, each of you can talk about how your experience has improved since you um, left your former union and came over to Nutmeg. So one of the first things you talked about when we talk about this is that you felt empowered. Yeah, that's the word that comes to mind the most um, since I've been working with, uh, with Nutmeg, with Eric. Immediately during our very first phone call, uh, you explained a lot of the things that were happening, you explained a lot of the processes that I had, I, I didn't even know existed. Um, you actually even helped with a, with a grievance uh, before we even got on board with you. You were, you were so kind to help me with that. Through it all, from that point to the point we are at today, every time I've worked with you, I become more empowered. That's how I feel. I feel smart about what's going on. I feel comfortable working with management, uh, battling with management. You're on um, more even foot, we're on more even footing. Yeah, yeah, big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, has it made a difference having an attorney representing you versus before when you just had a staff rep? Yes, especially at the negotiating table when they have an attorney and we now have an attorney, it's a, there's a big difference there. And you are the big difference too. I yeah. don't know if it would be any attorney, but you make a big difference. I've always tried to make the playing field more level for my members. And I think that sometimes management has tried to take advantage of our unions because the representation that they had before we came on board wasn't the best that they thought it was going to be easy to roll over the unions. And so I, I, tr I try to establish our authenticity and our ability to um, meet them where they're at. I think it starts just with our presence, um, our command of the language, and even the way we look when we show up. I think all of that matters. And we sort of take pride in that. And I think it has made a difference, at least at the bargaining table with you. A little after um, we started, we came on board during a contract year when you were negotiating, which is typically when the change is made, when contract negotiations start. Sharon, if you want to describe how those negotiations went and how they ended up. Well, they didn't go well <laughs> right off the, the bat. 
I, I clearly remember that when we finally got to sit down at the table um, with management, everything was a no from them. The entire team was very impressed with, with your responsiveness, your knowledge, obviously, of the law, and your ability to put them in their place in the right way, you know, and then we ended up, what, after a few sessions, we ended up in arbitration. Yeah. And, Which is um, something, if I may, something that I had been advocating in previous contract negotiations, just as a union member, I was not even on the executive board in any capacity, but every time we had had a contract come up, uh, you know, for voting, you know, I, I kept asking why we can't go to arbitration. It was always, no, we're never going to take you to arbitration. We're not going to take you to arbitration. And you said, I think we need to go to arbitration. <laughs> there was an expense associated with that, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. How did we manage that? How did we manage that? Uh, well, we had a little money in the kitty, just a little, uh, because we were withholding our dues uh, from that previous union. But I, you know, you did work with us that way too. You, you yeah. were very kind to us that way. I think I told you back then that uh, if we had to go to arbitration, we'd go to arbitration. We worried about the cost later. Yes, you sort did. Of the way it worked out, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that arbitration, we didn't get everything we wanted, but we did get some of what we wanted, particularly on the pension side. Yes. And then once the arbitration was over, we were almost right back at negotiations again. How'd that negotiation go? Fabulously. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be the smoothest contract negotiation in history. Um, the climate sitting down at that table was completely different. There was respect. Yes. Yes. So Lori, um, you weren't part of the executive committee when I first started, but you came along fairly soon after. What do you hear from your members about the representation that you're getting now and the contracts that you have now compared to what, what there was beforehand? After the first contract negotiation, there were still members who were questioning why we went with an attorney rather than another union. It didn't come up often, but it did it did come up. And then after this last negotiation, everybody's okay. Yeah, yeah. this is you know, There was some infighting throughout the process of the decertification, you know, um, which is fine. I mean, everybody's entitled mm -hmm. to their opinions and their beliefs. But we kept pushing the that we're a team. We're now in charge. We make our decisions. You know, that's another thing you had said from the beginning is I will always give you the best advice I can, but the ultimately the decision is yours to make. So after a few years and after we settled the con current contract uh, in five meetings, mm -hmm. unbelievable mm -hmm. record, it went from people questioning it to I was getting hugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Eric is amazing. Right. Best thing we ever right. did. Right. So I talked a little bit about your group being predominantly female employees. And there's a distinction between um, how women are viewed in the workplace and how men are viewed in the workplace. And so how has Nutmeg in my office dealt with those issues relative to your group? Again, I want to say respect. We're not somebody you can just steamroll anymore. Um, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. It's you've given us a voice, um, and they now have respect for us that they didn't necessarily have before. Yeah, yeah. I think you made it very clear. Um, thinking back to the the first negotiations, you made it very clear that that was your position, that they were treating us as less lesser people, and that that was met with a lot of resistance and denial from the management. Um, but I think that in the end, they've come to realize, I don't think you know, there'll never be an, an admittance of guilt over it, but um, they realize that, yeah, they're, they're not just you know, a bunch of women. We can just, like Lori said, steamroll. You know, no employer is perfect. And, and every now and then you'll have something that'll come up at, that could be a grievance or an unfair labor practice. How do you typically address those things now? Do you have to go through the formal process a lot or do you handle those things informally? now? No, most of the time it's a conversation, you know, um, and we're able to come to 
some agreements mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? I don't think they want to mess around with Eric Brown. <laughs> Um, right. You know, I think that right. they would rather settle it, you know, amicably than go through all these formal process. As I think back to the amount of work that we put into to this union in what seems like a long time, but is really a fairly short time. We filed petitions for members uh, that were doing union work that were not in the union, you know, that were right in our faces. You know, we filed that, we filed multiple grievances, MPPs, those things. And now it's a conversation. This is what's going on. We'd rather work together and it's, yeah. And they would rather work together. It used to be, we would go to them with a, an issue or, or a problem and immediately it was, no, immediately this is not gonna change. Now it's, okay, let's talk about this. Let's see how we can make this work for both of us. Yeah. So, so Nutmeg, we try to do training and, and we've actually started doing more uh, now that Zoom is sort of, everybody has it and can use it. So how has the training helped you in doing your jobs with the union? Well, I think we've learned about how to manage a union, how to help manage a union. Now that we know things, when we listen to your webinars or the professional development stuff, we can pick up even more things to, to help us. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so much that we can do, but we can't always focus solely on union stuff. But with the webinars, we, oh, wait, let me write that down. And yeah. now we'll bring that into our, into, into our next negotiation. Let's ask Eric more about that. Or, right. Oh. Or actually, I think that this is a problem. I think they're doing yes. something yes. like she's at home and I'm at home right. and we're texting each other yeah. going, I think yes. that what he just said is happening right, right now. Yes. And, um, and then we get on it and investigate mm -hmm. it and have that conversation and we, we get it fixed. I've had to call you less and less over the last couple of years. Yeah, I think, and that sort of goes to our goal, which has always been to empower our locals to do what they need to do with management. Because I think better relationships are built when internally the union leaders deal with management directly rather than having the mean old attorney come in and start throwing legal isms around i mean have you found that too yes yes yeah. and and they don't want to pay for arbitration just like we don't want to pay for arbitration yeah. when we first started together it was just little old me and uh you know with a desk and a phone and that was it and now uh we've put together a team so we have jay puglis who's another lawyer uh, with the firm and Jay Cooling, who does a lot of our union outreach. And uh, I have a legal assistant, Adrian, and we have our social media person, uh, Julianne. So uh, we've grown the team. How has that helped you in getting the stuff that you need to get done? There's always been very good response time from you, but now we have the ability to talk with Jay or with Jason. If you're tied up with something else, you know, there's, um, your growth has only made things easier for us to do business. Yeah. And, and they have different perspectives too, mm -hmm. which is sometimes good to hear as well. Yeah. Well, they both come from police departments. They were actually police officers. Cops view the world differently than the rest of us normal people. I say that to them even. Um, but I, I also think that they, they have a good union background. And so that, and, and, my experience with police unions has always been the cops always got the best contracts. And I think they, they bring that idea with them and they, they use it to their advantage with all of our bargaining units, whether we're dealing with police or um, school districts. So I think that's been helpful for not only, not only my office, but I think for our members as well. If someone had co would come up to you today and say, hey, we're thinking of switching, what do you think about us moving over to Nutmeg? What would you say to them in a nutshell? I guess I'll start with you, Lori. Don't hesitate. Um, it'll be the best decision you've you've made, and both both for your union and for yourself. <laughs> yeah, right? ditto. Because um, if you if you want to see good contracts, if you want to see respected labor relations uh, for all matters. I would definitely recommend calling Nutmeg. All right, thank for you. For your own peace of mind, especially, <laughs> right. yes. Well, one of the things that I've always talked about is I try to deliver peace of mind and hopefully I've done that for you 
And I can continue to do that with all the other groups that I have. Yeah. So um, it's been nice of you to come and speak with me today. Your statements about what we can do uh, is going to help a lot of people make their decisions. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm sure they will be too. So thanks again for doing this today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap. All right.